Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In Mark 12, verse 28 to 34, a scribe approaches Jesus and asks, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus responds by quoting two commandments. First, he cites Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 to 5. The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The passage from Deuteronomy 6, 1-9 is foundational to the faith of Israel and remains central for Christians today. Known as the Shema, it calls for faith, it calls for undivided love and devotion to God, as well as the importance of passing on this faith to future generations. This text invites us to reflect on what it means to love God fully and to live a life centered on his commandments. As Moses speaks to the Israelites, they are standing on the edge of the promised land, about to enter a new chapter in their history. God, through Moses, emphasizes the need for faithfulness as they move forward, reminding them of who they are and who God is. Let's consider this text broken down into three parts. A call to obey God's commandments. Secondly, a call to love God fully. And third, a call to pass on the faith. Moses instructs the Israelites not only to internalize God's commandments, but also to pass them on to future generations. This is a key part of the Shema. The faith is not just for the individual. It is for the family and the community. Parents are called to diligently teach their children about God's commandments and to make these teachings a part of their daily lives. It should be a natural part of everyday life. God's word is meant to shape not only how we worship, but how we live day to day. Every moment is an opportunity to reflect on God's goodness and to share his word with others, especially our children. For us today, this call to pass on the faith remains crucial. As parents, grandparents, mentors, and leaders, we are responsible for teaching the next generation about God. We must diligently and lovingly pass on the truths of the gospel, not only through our words, but through our lives. Children, Young people and new believers need to see that God's commandments are more than rules. They are a pathway to life. And they must be embraced with love. So what does this passage mean for us in our daily walk with God? What does it mean to live in obedience to, God, to God's words? Just as the Israelites were called to obey God's commandments, 
We are called to live in obedience to God's word today. This obedience is not burdensome, but life-giving, as it aligns with God's wisdom and will. Are we listening to and obeying God's voice in our lives? What does it mean to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength? The call to love God fully challenges us to examine our hearts. Are we loving God with everything we have or are we holding something back? Loving God with all our heart, soul, and strength means allowing his love and his will to shape every aspect of our lives. What does it mean to pass on the faith? Whether we are parents, grandparents, teachers, or simply members of a community of faith, we all have a responsibility to pass on the faith. How can we be more intentional in sharing God's word with the next generation? Are we teaching by example as well as by instruction? In Deuteronomy 6, 1-9, we are given a powerful call to love God fully and to teach his commands diligently. As we seek to follow these commands in our own lives, may we grow in obedience, deepen in love, and take seriously responsibility of passing on the faith to those who come after us. This is how we live out the greatest commandment to love God with all our heart soul and might. Then Jesus adds a second commandment from Leviticus 19 verse 18. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other, other commandment greater than these. Jesus sums up the essence of God's law with these two commandments. Love for God and love for neighbor. The scribe agrees with Jesus, acknowledging that loving God and neighbor is more important than the religious rituals, like burnt offerings and sacrifices. Jesus, seeing the scribe's understanding, tells him, you're not far from the kingdom of God. This passage highlights that true faith is not only about religious observance, but is centered on love. Love for God and love for others, which encompasses the whole law and prophets. On Friday last, we, there's a celebration of All Saints Day. Some churches use it as an opportunity to celebrate All Saints Day on this Sunday. But when I was reflecting on Mark 12, 28 to 34, I found that I could connect, we could connect the passage to the lives of the saints. All Saints Day is a celebration of the faith and lives of all Christians who have gone before us. especially those who have embodied Christ's teachings in exemplary ways. In the Gospel passage, Jesus emphasizes the greatest commandments are to love God with all, one, well, with all one's heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. The saints are those who have lived these commands in profound ways, often at great personal cost. Their lives provide a witness to what it looks like to truly love God and neighbor. So then, loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and strength means giving ourselves fully to God, as the saints did. 
Many saints dedicated their lives to prayer, worship, and acts of service, showing their complete devotion to God. In their examples, we see that loving God requires an all-encompassing commitment, not just intellectual belief, but heart, deep soul, deep love. Loving our neighbors as ourselves is also central to the life of the saints. Many saints work tirelessly to serve the poor, heal the sick, fight for justice, and spread the gospel. They lived out the call to care for others with the same compassion and generosity they would want for themselves. Saints like St. Francis of Assisi, who loved creation and served the poor, or St. Teresa of Calcutta, who cared for the dying, shows us what it looks like to love others with the heart of Christ. Thus, Mark 12, 28 to 34, when we celebrate All Saints Day, it reminds us that the saints are models of what it means to live out the great commandments. They show us the way to holiness by their radical love for God and their selfish love for, for others. As we honor their memory, we all are also called to follow in their footsteps, striving to live lives marked by the same love and devotion that they exemplified. It is a fitting reminder that on All Saints Day, that holiness is found in love. Love that is not just a feeling, but a way of life. Through the intercession of the saints, we ask for the grace to love as they loved and to seek the kingdom of God through a love for God and neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.